Um, just like uh, animals, we just like humans can't survive in environments with carbon monoxide, um, animals in the aquarium have to survive under certain circumstances as well. So in order to test the water um, in an aquarium, scientists use the technique of a titration to test the water, determining the concentrations of the ammonia, the nitrates, and the nitrates. And then based upon these concentrations, they can then um, determine if they have to improve their the waters or if they have to if they are living in a healthy environment. I'm Maria, and I'm going to be talking about Experiment 7, which is the determination of the concentration of a weak acid, just like the scientists had to use the titration to, to um, determine the co concentrations in the aquarium, we use the titration to determine the concentrations of a weak acid. Today I'll talk about the purpose of the experiment, the summary, the raw data that was collected, um, a few example calculations, the tables that accompany these calculations, and then the, the discussion. The purpose of the experiment. Uh, we standardized the solution of sodium hydroxide and used it to determine the concentration of the weak acid, which was acetic acid, and we standardized the sodium hydroxide using the KHP. Summary of the experiment. So we started by massing out four samples of KHP and adding um, 100 milliliters of distilled water to these samples. And then we titrate, we added um, phenolphthalein, which was the indicator to determine when the endpoint was reached. And then we titrated the KHP with the sodium hydroxide to then calculate what the concentration of the sodium hydroxide would be. And then using that um, concentration, we, it brought us into part two, which was um, determining the concentration of the acetic acid. I would obtain 15 milliliters in four different flasks of the acetic acid. Um, I added phenolphthalein, which is also the indicator, to determine when the endpoint was reached, which was when the, um, the faintest shade of pink was uh, visible. And then after reaching the endpoints, the unknown acid concentration was then determined through calculations. Here you can see the tables that I did. Up there is the standardization of the sodium hydroxide solution. So I, here, there are my masks of the KHP and then the burette readings. And the last um, column is, or the last row is the volume of the NaOH that was used. And then this table right here is the determination of the unknown acid concentration. It's pretty much the same table, except for instead of including the mass of the KHP, it's the volume of the unknown concentration, which was 15 milliliters. Um, my calculations, we were asked to uh, write out a balance equation. As you can see, the um, ratio for the sodium hydroxide to the KHP is 1 to 1. And then from there, we were asked to determine the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. So beginning with the grams of KHP, we um, used the different conversions to uh, reach us to the moles of NaOH. And then using the moles of NaOH, we divided that by the milliliters of the sodium hydroxide used, which was um, 0 0.01900 mil milliliters, or no, sorry, liters, and so the average molarity was 0 0.0900 moles per liter. And then we were asked to do the standard deviation, which I got 2.45 times 10 to the minus 4. And then the uh, second calculation was to determine the concentration of the acetic acid. So using the concentration of sodium hydroxide used in part 1, we um, started with the liters of sodium hydroxide and multiplied it by the average molarity of the sodium hydroxide. To, and since it's also a one-to-one -one ratio of the acetic acid to the sodium hydroxide, the moles of sodium hydroxide equals the moles of acetic acid. And then after we got the moles of acetic acid, we divided the acetic acid by the um, volume of acetic acid, which was 15 milliliters to get um, an average of 0 0.0790 moles per liter for the uh, acetic acid. And for the discussion, um, if the KHP was contaminated with um, sodium chloride, what would happen to the sodium hydroxide? Um, <laughs> the, so the molarity of the sodium hydroxide would increase because the mass of the KHP would be less than we would have thought it would have been. So that it would have given us a lower volume of sodium hydroxide, meaning when we would have divided the moles of sodium hydroxide by the volume, since it was a lower volume, we would have got a greater molarity. And then um, why did we use so solid sodium hydroxide? The reason is because sodium hydroxide is hygroscopic, meaning that it would have been the mass of the water plus the sodium hydroxide, 
So the mass would have been greater than it would have actually been since there was the mass of the water as well. So we used KHP because it was non-hygroscopic, which meant that the, um, the molarity of the sodium hydroxide was more accurate since we could standardize it with the KHP. Here's my references.